This is the unit seven and eight help video for the multiple choice portion of the study guide. Taking a look here at number one, the most important thing for you to remember is this simple concept. Measure of a central angle to its arc the same. The second thing you want to watch out for is the diameters of tray, stretch, and sweep diameters. So you catch the 180 because of straight lines. Also watch out for your vertical angles. And then it's actually asking for a major arc. Make sure you go in that exact order, staying on the edge of the circle. So we're going, when once you solve for X and you find all the arc measures, we're going to find F, G, D in that order, starting at F, go through G, end at D. Make sure you follow that exact order. Pause the video, do both of these. Number three, it asks you to find the area of a circle. So we write our equation. Apple pie is really, really good. And you look at what you've been given. Circumference, so you write your circumference equation. C. D pi, I C D pi. And you circle. What do you have in common? Circumference equals circumference. I know 20 pi equals D pi. Obviously, you're going to solve for the diameter. Remember, once you have the diameter, that's all the way across, and you find the radius. Once you find the radius, Find the area in pi form. That's three and four. Five and six is simply the backwards of that, starting now with the area going towards the circumference. Do all four problems. Work in pencil. Check your work. We want to find the length of the arc. The length of the arc. Now, let me show you what it's not. The measure of the arc is simply the same as that central angle. The measure of the arc is 210 degrees. Measure goes with degrees. If I want to find the length of the arc, Arc length is fraction of the circumference. Get that fraction, that's theta over 360 times the circumference, which is d pi. You plug stuff in, you carefully reduce this. You're going to do this in pi form, 210 over 360 trace your diameter. Your diameter is not 6, it's 12 pi. Reduce as far as you can. Goodbye zeros. 12 goes into 36 three times and you can finish it off from there. This one, we want sector area. Now, just like arc length was fraction of the circumference, this sector area is fraction of the area. That fraction is theta over 360. 
times the area pi r squared. Our theta in this case is 240 over 360. I'm going to bring my radii right here, trace it. That's 18 times 18. We're going to do this in pi form, so pi is just going to hang out over here. You want to reduce. Obviously, 18 does go into 36, so you just keep passing away until you get to the lowest reduce number with pi tacked on. Pause the video and finish. It wants you to find the measure of the arc indicated. You guys are used to finding everything in general. I suggest you still do that. If you find everything, then you look backwards and you will have found your item. Three things I want you to watch out for in this section. First off, darken all your ons. Always start with your ons. Darken your ons. The ons, if you trace it, physically trace it, and sweep the angle and sweep the arc, the ons are the halves. So we know that the inscribed angle equals whatever the arc is over 2. So in this one case, I know the angle 81 equals whatever the arc is over 2. And you see that that blue arc, you simply double it. The second thing besides the angle is half the arc, if it's an on, is if you have an inscribed quad, that opposite angles add up to 180. So just kind of keep that in mind. In an inscribed quad, opposite angles add up to 180. That's going to come into play in this problem because you have to find this angle back here in order to find this big arc here and the missing side. Last thing I want you to watch out for is watch out for any diameter usage. Any diameter usage. So the ons, angle equals half the arc. Inscribed quads, opposite angles, add up to 180. <coughs> Make sure you trace and sweep angles. These guys. Ready? I'd like you to trace this right here and trace that. Now I trace it again and sing. If tangent to a radius, 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 if tangent to a radius, right angle at the edge. So watch out for your tangent and your radius. There's going to be right angles there. Second thing you want to watch out for for these kind of problems is simply the fact that triangles add up to 180. Third is because all radii are equal. Draw on your radii. That's one. That's two. That's three. Hatch mark them. Because all radii are equal, you need to watch out for isosceles triangles. Two equal sides, two equal angles. Using that, also the very simple one, watch out, do not overlook your linear pair, which are the back-to-back -back angles that add up to one you Don't overlook the obvious stuff. So to recap, tangent to a radius, right angle at the edge. Watch out simply for the fact that triangles, big triangles, watch out for those big triangles, add up to 180. The radii often give you isosceles triangles. 
And last but not least, watch out for your linear pairs that add up to 180. Use that to solve for your unknown. It says identify the center and radius and sketch the graph. Start by writing the equation of a circle, x minus h squared, y minus k squared equals radius squared. And in this case, we want to find our h, our k, and our radius. So we have x minus nothing is just x. x minus nothing is just x. We just found that our h is therefore 0. y minus k, we look up and we end up with a positive 1. That means our k had to have been a negative 1, because only a double negative would make that positive. Last, r squared equals 4, so the radius is going to be 2. You graph the center there, 0, negative 1. Make sure you graph that properly. Bunny hop your radius. And that was a bad circle. Let's try that again. There you have your circle. This one, we want to use the information provided. You simply write an equation. Once again, write an equation x minus a squared, y minus k squared equals radius squared. Our h, we're going to plug in right there. Our k, right there. Problem is, we do not have our radius. Be careful, the radius is not 64. You ask yourself, what have you been given? The area. So you start by writing the area equation. Area equals pi r squared. Now, since the areas are the same, you can come over here. Solve for the radius. Once you solve for that radius, you plug it in there, and there's your equation of the circle. Nineteen and twenty. The easiest way to do these is to Put your hands out in front of you and then attempt to fold the image into the solid in a way that you can feel it. And once you go through that process with your hands, then it's easier to draw. So because I take a look here and I see that I have nothing but rectangles, I know number 20 is going to be a prism. So those are going to be my faces, and that means this and this is my base. Three, four, five, three, four, five. And if you were to fold it, so I'm going to end up with a triangular prism. To draw that, I simply draw one of the bases kind of at a slant. So I'm going to draw that triangular prism. That's five, that's three, that's four. And then I'm going to drop down each of these. So I'm going to draw this face here straight down. And when you wrap it around, this four side is going to match right there. And this three side matches to this edge. And the effect is 
you have another triangle paralleled right here at the bottom. Okay, just let me help you see those edges. This edge folds there. This wraps around to the other side and folds there. One base was there and then one base is down here. So it is a triangular prism. You want to find the volume of each figure. Now, there's basically only three volume equations. Let's write them in the margin here so you have them. There is your prism and cylinder, which is volume equals base times height. Your pyramid and cone, which is volume equals base times height over three. And then you have your sphere, volume equals four pi r cubed over three. So your first order of business is to figure out which one goes where. Here's a simple distinction. Anything that comes to a point or a vertex, a single vertex, that is a pyramid or a cone, and that's gonna be this guy. Anything that has two bases, like these two trapezoids, that's a prism. That's base times height. I certainly hope you'll recognize a sphere when you see it. So for each of these, you're going to follow these steps. Shade base equations. Circle plug chug. Shade base equations. Circle plug chug. We're going to start by shading our base. So in this pyramid, we shade our base. Now we write our equation. It comes to a point, so we're using this one. Volume equals base times height over 3. Now you circle that base, and we're going to define it. Because the B changes. The B is a right triangle. So that base area is going to be one leg times the other leg over two. That's now your base times your height. And all of this is over three. So all I did there is I defined what was my base, which is a right triangle. Now you circle, plug, chug. And one leg was three. The other leg was four. Over two. Times your true height, which is down the middle, also known as the altitude. In this case, it's six. And of course, this whole thing is over three. Shade base equations. Circle plug chug. Always be in the habit of shading your bases. And remember, for prisms, the bases must be C. P, R, congruent, parallel, connected by rectangles. So you're going to do that through 26. And 27, 25, and 26 specifically are in pi form. It asks if the two figures are similar. Remember, similar. Similarity means congruent angles, ratios equal. So the ratios being equal, that's what you test. You test to see if corresponding segments, if you reduce them, if the ratios are equal. If they are, they're similar. 
make sure you are doing what's called corresponding segments. For example, 36 and 30 are not corresponding segments. The 30 is a radius. Therefore, the corresponding segment here is 18. Make sure you check your ratios and you use corresponding segments. It says some information about either the surface area or the volume of two similar shapes. That means they're already similar has been given. Find the missing value. So let's take a look at 30. We've been given the volumes. So the very first thing you want to do is those are the actual volumes. You want to get down to the ratio of the volumes. So we're going to start by canceling the zeros. We're going to start working and seeing but they can both be divided by. So we're just testing. So I'm going to go 648. I'm going to try 36. See if they're both divisible by 36. Okay, so 648 is divisible by 36. Okay, 2187 is not divisible by 36. So I'm going to try something else. I'm going to try 12. Okay, 648 is divisible by 12. Okay, that other volume, 2187, is not divisible by 12. So now I need to start thinking outside the box here just a little bit. Let's try three. I've got 216. They're both divisible by three. So I have 216 and 729 when I divide them both by three. Now you see if there's anything else they can be both divided by. Okay, I know it can't be two. I know it can't be three. So let's try 216 divided by 3. Can't, okay, 216 does divide by 3. Let's try 729 divided by 3. And we get Okay, so that's 72. They're both divisible by 3 again. And we get 72. And this was divisible by 3. And we get 243. Again, your job is to keep going until you can get the same number I'm going to try three again since we seem to be on a roll here. So I'm going to go 72 divided by three. I get 24 and 243 divided by three and I get 81. So 72 divided by three, I get 24. And 81. And we see if we can't go down any farther. And looks like I can do divided by three again. 24 divided by three is going to get me um, eight. And 81 divided by three gets me 27. Now, I know there's nothing else I could divide these into, so I have found my ratio. Now, notice this is volume, so I'm in 3D. 
I'm being asked to find the surface area unknown. So let's make our 3D ratios. We have one dimension, two dimension, and three dimension. I just found my third dimensional ratio is eight to 27. Now I have to backtrack and I ask myself, what number cubed gives you eight? And what number cubed gives you 27? I know this number is two. And I know this number is going to be three. Then you move, walk it forward. My second dimension is two squared is four. My second dimension, three squared is nine. Now, why did I do all three? I want my second dimension ratio. Now that I have it, you can make a proportion. 144 kilometers squared to unknown. Going left to right equals four, which is two dimensions, to nine, which is two dimensions. I'm working left to right, left to right. Cross multiply, solve. So your job is to first get your all three ratios, 1D, 2D, 3D, Choose the one you need to work with in order to solve for the unknown.